I mean, I would say there's, you know, there's two really important factors in making our show great. I think it's number one, the experience. Um, you know, we host our shows in, I would say, like historically significant places. Uh, Greenfield and in Massachusetts and Allegan, Michigan. It, you know, basically, they're both kind of where uh, I would say the legacy cannabis market started for one. Uh, the other thing is that they're at fairgrounds. That's so we can allow consumption and sampling. I think it's essential for the experience to have consumption and sampling at a cannabis show. And then I would say two, it's about bringing the right people. So, you know, we have a big focus on keeping our show we're, we're a niche, we're a really focused trade show. We bring together brands and buyers. That's we are here at Meet Unshackled. We are unraveling, unshackling the truth behind the conferences, the go-to places for 2024. Thank you for watching our preview. And we are thrilled to be joined by Jason Bellow, the author, the master, the brain trust. I don't have any, the right words for it, but everything that uh, the guy who helped create one of the go-to shows of the year, the Flower Expo. And uh, you are uh, in June in Massachusetts and August in Michigan. And I think both of these are go-to shows this year. But Jason, tell us a little about yourself, uh, when you got into cannabis and how you started the Flower Expo, and then let's talk a little bit about the conference. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dimitri. It's always great to work with you and appreciate it. Um, we've got, yeah, Flower Expo in Massachusetts on June 5th and 6th of this year. And in Michigan, this is the first time we're launching Michigan on August 7th and 8th. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my background, I graduated USC and I worked at Hall of Flowers where my dad's a, one of the founders and a partner there. I worked there for a number of years, went on to another event called Green Street Festival. We hosted probably the first and biggest consumer, you know, cannabis festival in Los Angeles. Uh, went on to Source Cannabis where I headed sales for one of the top flower companies in California and then launched Flower Expo kind of to, you know, solve the issue I, I found as a cannabis operator and specifically a salesperson trying to get my product on the shelves. Well, that, that's fantastic. Wow. That's, that's quite a pedigree. And so the, the design behind Flower Expo, what, what is, I mean, I, I loved it. I was there last year and the vibe was tremendous. It was a great combination of all things, Massachusetts, dispensaries, brands, some ancillary, Tell us a little bit about the expo and how it works. Yeah, I mean, I would say there's, you know, there's two really important factors in making our show great. I think it's number one, the experience. Um, you know, we host our shows in, I would say, like historically significant places. Uh, Greenfield and in Massachusetts and Allegan, Michigan. And, you know, basically, they're both kind of where uh, I would say the legacy cannabis market started for one. Uh, the other thing is that they're at fairgrounds. That's so we can allow consumption and sampling. I think it's essential for the experience to have consumption and sampling at a cannabis show. And then I would say, two, it's about bringing the right people. So, you know, we have a big focus on keeping our show. Uh, we're, we're a niche. We're a really focused trade show. We bring together brands and buyers. That's you know, that's our bread and butter. So we try to bring together only cannabis brands and our attendees are really only dispensary decision makers and bud tenders. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm all about the educational aspect. I mean, we're a media company and organization that brings people together. So I like to go places where I can learn the insides of what's happening in the cannabis industry. So for me, it's like one of the absolute go-to events where you get to get a feel for the interaction between the buyers, the dispensaries, the retail, the cultivators. It's like all the insiders are there, which is cool. Can anyone go or do you, is it, I know the type of per people that should go, but is it limited? Are you like, uh, cause Hall of Flowers does only certain people can get in. Are you guys limiting yeah, it, some capacity? I would say it, it is very, you know, private and only invite only. Um, I would say day two, there are passes available. 
on our website. It's catered to cannabis executives. So, you know, day two opens up a little bit, but day one is, you know, strictly that that brand to buyer interaction so that, you know, dispensaries can really procure the product um, and know what they're they're purchasing and um, obviously what's going on their shelves. And around how many brands and dispensaries are there in the Massachusetts market right now? Yeah, I would say, God, there's probably upwards of something like 300 brands. Um, there's nearly 300 dispensaries as well. Um, I would say this show should bring out about 250 of them. Yeah, and what I love about your show is, is it's just kind of positioned there in Western Mass. And if anybody knows the Northeast, you know, Vermont, Maine, New York, Connecticut, you know, I can see this show as be, being one of those shows that eventually becomes into, a, a, evolves into a regional hub of activity, uh, not just uh, buying and selling brands and uh, with retail as interstate commerce comes along sometime in the next couple of years, hopefully, uh, but also uh, networking and gathering information, sharing intelligence, best practice, et cetera. So congratulations on what you have done so far and what you're going to do in the future. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I think Flower Expo is going to evolve into being, you know, one of the strongest shows in the Northeast. And you're right, that prime location, definitely, you know, it's a quick drive from anywhere, two hours from New York, you know, probably an hour from Boston. So I think we can, you know, drive out a lot of those license holders this year. And the, uh, the, the Michigan one, it's going to be the same model. There's going to be some teaching to be the, like, uh, what do you call those? Like a speaker series. Educational. educational summits. I never get to go to the educational summits anymore, anywhere at MJ BizCon or anywhere, because I'm always podcasting. I'm always interviewing people. I'm learning one-on-one. -on -one, so I don't get to sit in these seminars, but are you guys going to be doing that as well? I hear you. Yeah, no, I would say, um, you know, the Michigan event, it's going to probably draw out same kind of crap, 400 dispensaries, um, you know, probably 150 of the top brands speaker series. Yes. We're, you know, we're putting that together right now. I think it's going to be pretty robust. You're going to hear from, uh, some of the leading people in the Michigan cannabis industry, as well as, you know, I would say we're going to probably bring out people from other industries, other notable figures that, you know, might have some words of wisdom to our industry. Yeah. I, you know, this is the way I, that I learned the most, but when I started 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, there wasn't a seminar or a conference educational series. They have different names for them that I didn't sit through. So you guys have access to some of the best brands, the best retailers, you know, people with, you know, hands-on experience, uh, evolving a marketplace, evolving a company. So, I mean, it's probably going to be a great series of speakers that you have. No, a hundred percent. And I totally agree with that testament. I, I always think it's, incredibly, you know, guiding and inspirational to hear from not only people who are exceeding in like, you know, the objective that you're in and, you know, within our own industry, but from people from other industries who've, you know, gone through adversity and succeeded. So is the Michigan place going to be outdoors as well? It's mixed. So it's at a fairgrounds. We're going to have three indoor halls and then we're going to have an outdoor area um, without some of the bigger outdoor booths, um, and, you know, some lounges, obviously, you know, the nature of a flower expo event, it's, it's fun, it's entertaining. So not only are there booths, but there's, you know, a really nice smoking lounge, there's food trucks, there's music, you know, playing throughout the whole event. It's really a fun time where, you know, you're enjoying yourself, you're, you're with your colleagues and kind of getting out of the dispensary or the grow, but you're also having a really good time and getting you know, business deals done. Yeah. And one of my favorite, I love, you know, to me, your, your methodology is, is perfect. And I, the reason I think that is because, you know, I'm not a consumer myself and I use cannabis to relax and sometimes sleep at night, yeah. but I want to stay sober during the day. I don't want to drink and I don't want to smoke and I don't even smoke cigarettes and I try to avoid coffee. I'm like this weird kind of Mormon reality now, but it's good. <laughs> and yeah. your show and there's like a gentle haze that comes passing by that creates like a 1% relaxing, calming ambiance. It's not a hot box, but it's like a warm box. It's like a warm feeling that you get and, and you're just chilling and all this activity is going on and just people are just pleasant and in a good mood. The Earl cup does it here. 
in Phoenix and there's other places that do it as well. Yeah. But, you know, and nothing wrong with the real static, no cannabis allowed conferences. I get it. It has its place. It has its role. But I really think what you're doing and that model is the hybrid that's going to be, you know, most appealing to people in the future. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, there's a lot of different types of trade shows. It's a niche focus. We, we focus on, you know, literally procuring the product. It's all about procuring the product and deciding what you want to, you know, what dispensaries want to be selling. So that's, that's kind of our lane, our avenue. And yeah, of course it's, I think it's fun. You're out in the sun. It's an enjoyable experience. You're, you're getting high, you're, you know, enjoying good food, you're listening to music. So, you know, we try to make it, like I said, fun, but you're getting business done too. It's not a, it's not a waste of two days by any means. And then, and at the Massachusetts show while we're there, you know, we have these buggy races going behind us. It's like this weird sort of like country feel. It just, it just feels good to be there. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for this year for a sponsored blimp to fly overhead and maybe a plane dragging one of those signs behind it. You know, there's all kinds of opportunities. Uh, how's uh, there's still opportunities for uh, people to get in on the action in regards to like ancillaries and auxiliary companies, maybe dispensaries or brands out of uh, Massachusetts or elsewhere? Yeah, I mean, you know, primarily it's it's plant touching companies. I would say we do take a limited amount of top ancillary brands, but yeah, we're we're always selling and, you know, the the event is is definitely filling up both of these shows, Michigan and Massachusetts being so far out, um, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, reach out on our website. It's www.theflowerexpo.com to register and set a meeting with our team. Can we do like sponsored buggy races? Like do like the weed maps buggy races and then have different brands, uh, you know, placard different buggies. I'm just throwing this out here. It would be interesting. I, I will say we're going to be doing Bud Tender Olympics this year, which should be a really fun, engaging, you know, kind of experience and get some people out there and competing, having a good time. Bud Tender Olympics. I don't, I did. Yes. I do not know what that is, but I'm looking forward to finding out. That's pretty fun. exciting. All right. So, uh, dates, let's go through the dates again. We got, uh, June. It's, uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts on June 5th and 6th and Allegan, Michigan on August 7th and 8th. And absolutely. The, the June show, when you're making your planning, show up the 4th, 5th and 6th, and then hit Boston the 7th and 8th. Maybe call me. We can do dinner. Somebody can buy me dinner out there. Tap my brain. I can probably get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'll, I'll be there. Call me. Uh, but I'll definitely hit Boston for a couple days after that. And then the other show, what uh, what city do you fly into for in Michigan, Detroit? Grand Rapids. What was that? Grand Rapids, Michigan, on the western side of the state. Okay, yeah, I have to do my geography research there, but I'll, I, I will get there. I I have no doubt that the the masses will migrate in that direction from all over Michigan and the region uh, to see what you're putting together. I mean, you are you're a legacy family, and you're a legend in this industry already, and you're probably only like 28 years old. How old are you? I am 23. I, I, I love you, man. I love because you you are an OG to me. So that's fantastic. Thank you, man. Means a lot. And I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, we will see you in Massachusetts. If I don't see you somewhere out in the circuit before then, I'll see you in Massachusetts in June. Sounds good. And we will see you all at the Flower Expo. Don't miss it this year. Massachusetts and Michigan.